That's it. Oh my God. <laughs> Is this a mariachi band? This is what now? Oh. Nope, it's just a guy on a bike with a mariachi band exactly. song playing. Exactly. <laughs> He's looking for travelers. Oh, <laughs> I like your music. Thank you. But. This is beautiful. <gasps> Oh, that is really hot. This is where, oh yeah, the metal is that actually is so crazy. Hot. People love to jump up off this bridge. Jump in there? Yeah, you jump that from here. That does not look deep at all. It's so like maybe 15 feet. Like no. your feet will sink into the bottom a little bit, no. but it's possible. Pass. That's pretty awesome. Hey guys, show you that. let me jump. There you go. Wait, okay. you're jumping? Yes. Okay. Hold on. Uh, Unplanned moment. All right, May well, I film it? I have to wait for are you cool if we film it? Yep. Yeah, please. Goggles? No. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Okay, cool. Okay, so so on the topic of family. Hey, take it easy. Yeah, yeah. On the topic of family, what's something that you actually disagree with about how you were raised? Out of curiosity. And this is, now we should have a little more Probably shade. Probably being spanked. It's actually crazy you would say that. Really? It's crazy because that's exactly, I mean, minus the homeschooling, I would say the exact same thing. So you wish that you weren't homeschooled? Uh, yes. I mean, it came with benefits, but I feel like the number one thing is the physical discipline aspect. Because, and we can dig into why as well. Like, I think it just creates, like, shame and it creates, creates separation between the parent and their kid. Mm. You know, if the kid, if you're, if you associate with someone with physical pain of any type, like physical violence, even if it's meted out in a measured, like loving way, like premeditated, like my parents would never just spank me in the heat of a moment. Mm -hmm. They'd like you always send me to my room or they'd yeah. take a break or something. Wait for your dad to come home. Oh my God. That oh was actually God. the worst. Oh yeah. He and was he like was sitting in there just like, oh no. Like <laughs> stewing away. Oh, no. And he, he would have the belt. Like we had a dedicated like oh. rubber probably foot long like tool oh. for whacking but he would run the bell but oh, no. but my dad is not like a, a he's not a physical punishment guy so he would always kind of hate it as much as I did if he had to come home and she's like he's waiting up there in his room you gotta go spank him oh. so sometimes my dad would come up and he would just take the belt and like whack it against the bed really loud so it would sound like I was getting whooped. But he was sparing me. So I'm trying to stay in the shade. I love you, Dad. <laughs> no, you're smart. No, what was that like for you? I'm being spanked. I mean, I know what the experience of being spanked is <laughs> like, but, but um, in the, the adult mean, just, in retrospect. I think that our generation, we have a lot more tools and resources and understanding of conscious parenting or like ways of communicating how to acknowledge the experience of a child like what's actually happening in their brain we also mm. know now like how much you know adolescence really impacts the rest of our life like those you it's know critical critical ages like five to seven where everything's getting cemented in your brain mm. like I think the shame stuff, yeah, I, I, I've experienced a lot of shame in my body, disconnection from my body, and then, yeah, but a lot same. of that also was probably from growing up religious and hearing about not having sex before marriage and all same. of that. Same. A lot of overlap. <laughs> all of that stuff, yeah. I feel like it's such a, it's such a southern experience, too. Mm -hmm. It's like all, all these Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. Yeah. So many people I've met have that same experience, where it's like I was taught that this was something I should be afraid of, yeah. or I should feel super guilty or mm -hmm. shameful about if right. I have natural urges in my body, which is like, ooh, that person looks, looks, right. <laughs> looks attractive. You know, that's that's an interesting thing because, for instance, I was talking with my brother about this the other day, and he's so much in the camp of, like, as a grown adult, like, what happened in your past is your past. And at the end of the day, you have the choice to choose to conduct yourself however you want. I'm very much in the camp that all of those things leave a residue that you have to actually address and dig into to feel more healthy in the future. Because I've had to spend a lot of time just thinking and processing and going to therapy mm -hmm. to process 
which is funny because I feel like there's almost a, you almost feel a little ridiculous, right? You're like, do I really need to talk to a professional because somebody whacked me with a rubber stick growing up? Mm. Like it's almost, it almost feels like a, a silly thing to do, at least for me. But the results have been, results have been well, helpful. Yeah, I think like some of the things that, that you wouldn't equate some of the reasons why like you act or think the way that you do would be from something so small when you were a kid. Yeah. Like for me, one of those moments was was like seven or eight, and I was a gymnast, and my coach told me if I got a glide kip, this specific skill. What is this? Glide kip. It's like what the is thing where you like kip? jump on the bar, you like swing under it, and like kick it all the way up. Fancy. Yeah. Okay. So she's like, if you get that, then you get to move on to level five. Okay. So every night after practice, my mom would let me stay. She'd take me to open gyms on Saturdays, and I was practicing for weeks to get my my glide kip. And then I finally got it, and I remember being so excited, and I ran up to... This is beautiful. Um, as I ran up to my coach, and I was like, I got it, I got it, like, I can go to level five. And she was like, oh, like, I'm glad that you got it. Like, you're just still not, I don't know if she said not good enough, but the way I interpreted it was you're not good enough yet. She may have said something like, you're not ready yet. Like, okay. I know I said that, but you're, you're just not ready yet. Yeah. And so my interpretation was, I'm not good enough. And I remember like crying the whole way home. I was hysterical. Because it just felt like I worked so hard and no matter how hard, even though I still got it, I still wasn't good enough to make it to the team. And mm. it was such a simple, small thing that like, no one in that moment, my mom or her, probably knew the like mental damage and, like, anguish that yeah that that was creating and how much that's like played a part in my life since of never feeling like it was like no matter how hard I try, there's it's like never going to be enough. And I think that's why I've worked so hard and I've like a lot of my work has been because I want to be validated or approved by people. Interesting. Yeah. God, that is such a it is such a process. But once again, good on you that you would address it. That you, like to this day, you remember that experience, yeah. you remember it had an impact on you, and you process through it. What's yeah. the point? Not everyone would do that. I'm sure there's so many more, too, that, like, don't even, I don't even have in my awareness. I know. Currently. Guys, look at this beautiful this is view. really, really cool. Yeah, this is Luna F Point. Video of this? this is one of my favorite places to come Luna, in Austin. Luna F Point? Yeah. It's, Zilker Park is, is directly over this way. If we walk up the steps, we're at Zilker, but there's no tree tree cover there, so it's rather gnarly. Okay. What's a mistake? <laughs> What's a mistake that you keep making over and over again? What's a mistake that Mistakes I keep making over and over again. I mean, I would just say it's probably lowering my standards That's and so making real. exceptions for people because I don't want to lose approval or validation from someone. Like, mm. I want to be so liked that I'll tend to like, if I disagree with something, if I think me really disagreeing might like mm. lose the friendship or something, like I'll just not say anything. I see. And, and that's like affecting me with work, relationships obviously. So yeah, I get to work on just being more solid in my sense of self-worth and not needing validation. Just speak, speaking and standing in my truth. Speaking and standing in your truth. That is a great, that's a great answer. Any last words of wisdom for the good people of the internet? Mm -hmm. Words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. If you're someone that is constantly in your head and planning things and strategizing how to get ahead in life and you're stressed, about what's next for you? Something that you can just try on. Just try it on like a, a hat that you grab off the wall. Just try on a different hat, which is follow your heart and your intuition. Not the thing that you feel like you should do or the thing that you must do, but what's the thing that 
feels a little uncomfortable, maybe scary, because it's it's the thing that ex is exciting to you and you're curious about. And then just follow that and allow the universe to have your back. Because the thing that I'm finding is those like little wisps mm -hmm. of, oh, well, what about this or what about that? The universe wouldn't give you those types of intuitive thoughts if it wasn't going to back you up and having them become a reality. Like it just wouldn't happen. I agree. So, Beautiful. Just, Thank you. Just flow through life and just, just try it on and see how it feels. That was so lovely. Well, hey, if there's anybody else you think I should have a conversation with, please tag them. That would be wonderful. With that being said, thank you for being so wonderful. Have a good day.